Hey guys, Chili here. Let's take a look at the homework for Advanced 6.2. Your task was to use Allocate Shared in conjunction with the Win API uh, local alloc function. And I mean, you should probably already be able to guess this, but the point of doing that is so that you can have a single allocation that handles both the control block and the actual payload of the object all in one uh, all in one allocation. If you don't do that, you're going to have to construct your shared pointer via the constructor and then you're going to have uh, one allocation for the control block on the C++ heap and another allocation on the local alloc heap. So this is what the uh, the allocation call, the creation, is going to look like. Allocate shared. You're going to template that on the type of the object that we're creating. Uh, which is just a, a noisy class that announces its construction and destruction as I specified in the uh, description of the homework. And you have to pass it an allocator. So if we look at allocate shared, we can see it takes an allocator in and then it takes args. Args are the same kind of args as you would use for make shared, right? They just pass things on to the constructor of, well, in this case, noisy. But since noisy is not going to take any construction parameters, we don't have to pass any of these args, but we do have to pass the allocator. Allocate shared needs an allocator so that it knows how to allocate. So this obviously leads us down the path of, well, we, I guess we need to create an allocator and how the hell do we create an allocator? Well, first things first, let's, uh, let's look at what noisy looks like. It's, it's not anything surprising as a class. It's got a constructor, a destructor, and I gave it a little bit of embedded bytes here, a little bit of embedded data, just because I wanted something, some data to be allocated. It's not necessary. I just wanted to give it a little more beefy data to go in the place where allocation is done. But yeah, announcing constructor and destructor. Now here is the allocator. And you might be saying, well, Chili, how did you know how to make that? Wow, Chili, you're such a smart guy. You know how to make allocators. No, I... I, had, I mean, I won't say I didn't have any idea. I had a, a basic idea, but he didn't know all the details off the top of my head. God, no. In C++, in programming, in life in general, you don't have to memorize, you know, how to make an allocator, what are the requirements, or how to make a custom iterator. No. You just have to learn one thing. You have to learn how to research shit. That's all. So I just Googled the motherfucking thing, and I came up with this page, and this guy gives a good example of what you need for an allocator. So here he says, here's the, the things that you an allocator generally has. And then down here, he says, here is, you know, what a minimal allocator will look like. And this is basically what I copy pasted and massaged a little bit to do my bidding. So typically allocators are used to allocate bytes for, you know, an object of type T. So what you're generally going to want to do is you're going to want to template your allocator on T so that it can be used to allocate bytes for any object that needs bytes allocated. So that's the first step. Should be templated, right? And then there's a little type def here, T, the template parameter T is value type so that anyone using, you know, this template for template argument deduction can get the value type T of the allocator. It's just, just some mechanism stuff that helps template metaprogramming. Um, constructor doesn't, I mean, the allocator itself doesn't actually maintain any state. Uh, and here, I should have mentioned this at the beginning, but this allocator here, it's not using local alloc yet. I just did a basic test using, you know, new and delete. But yeah, you got a basic constructor, default constructor. Allocator doesn't need any state, so it doesn't need to take any parameters and do anything. Could have just been equals default. Uh, it also has a constructor here that allows you to convert from an allocator of a different type, type U, to type T. And that's, you don't have to do anything to actually do that conversion since the, all these allocators are identical. They don't store any state in the allocator itself, it's stateless, and therefore nothing actually needs to be converted. So conversion constructor, default constructor. Here you have a way of comparing allocators, and apparently allocators of, you know, that allocate for type U should be considered equal to those that allocate type T. I don't know. I mean, I don't know where this would actually be used. Uh, I don't even think it's necessary for our situation here, but the, the, the post said it had it in there, so I added these ones in here. 
The only real meat of this allocator here is the allocate and the deallocate functions. Allocate function returns a pointer to the allocated blocks of memory of type T. And all I'm doing here is I'm just using new car, the new car array operator to create an array of cars. And then I task type, I uh, cast that to the type T of the allocator. And then when it's time to deallocate, I just delete as an array of cars. And that's it. And it works fine. There's no problem with this. Instead of, you know, new car array, we could have used malloc and free. It would have been exactly the same stuff. One thing I quickly just want to touch on here, the uh, allocate parameter takes an n, which is the number of t's we want to allocate. This can allocate a, an array or a block of t's. So n is the number of t's that are requested. And, but there's also this hint here. Hint is a little interesting. Um, and it's, it's optional. It's optional to use the hint. Generally what you would do is if, uh, if, you, if an allocator receives a hint, it's a pointer to an address, it'll try to find a, a free block that is as close as possible to the hint. So it allows you to allocate uh, blocks as close to each other as possible. That's one way of using the hint. It's, it's completely implementation defined, uh, but that's typically the way you would use it. But you don't have to use it, and uh, we don't really have any way to use it, so it's just ignored here. And same with deallocate, uh, it takes the pointer to be freed, but also takes a size t. Uh, it takes an n, which would be the same n as the n passed into allocate. Uh, and again, we don't have to use this n in our case because uh, the delete operator it doesn't actually need to know how many things were in the memory block. That information is stored in the heap itself. But allocator is generally meant to, uh, to be usable for any kind of memory allocation, memory alloc uh, management scheme. So in general, you can't expect that uh, information to be stored in your memory allocation uh, structure. It might not be stored in certain implementations, and in those cases you would need this N in order to properly free a block of uh, memory. But for our situation, we can ignore the hint and we can ignore this N here. And it's very simple. I mean, there, there shouldn't be anything complicated about this. And I mean, if we build and run this, put the breakpoint here and look at it, yeah, created and destroyed, no exceptions, no segment faults, etc, etc. It uh, appears to work completely fine. No problem with this allocator. Actually, I, m I imagine, I mean, we could uh, we could clean this up even more. We could get rid of these, e these operators, although they're probably necessary in some situations. It's not strictly necessary in our situation. Let's just make this uh, default. Uh, and I could build this. I think it'll build. Yeah, it builds. What if we get rid of this one? Can we still build it? No, it needs that conversion uh, constructor. So somewhere in the guts of what Allocate Shared is doing, it is going to be uh, using this uh, conversion. And I, that makes sense because it has to allocate the control block plus the, um, the noisy object. So Obviously, its allocation is not going to be of a noisy, so it's going to have to convert this allocator to a different type of allocator. So it's probably going to use this for that. I don't know. Just just conjecture at this point. Uh, but anyways, here's your minimal allocator all done. Now, how would we do this with um, with local alloc and local free? Well, if we look at the Git history here, it's uh, it's pretty simple. What's been changed? Obviously, we got to include Windows.h. If we're going to be using that Windows function, and now for the uh, for the allocation, instead of calling new, we're going to call local alloc. And I mean, you can just look at the uh, the page for local alloc on MSDN, Microsoft's web page, and you can get the information. the The default uh, there's different modes that you can use. The default one is LMEM fixed. That's the default option, and then you just pass in the number of bytes, which again is n times size of t. That's local alloc. Now, if local alloc fails, it's going to return a, uh, a null pointer. So we're going to check for that. And if we get a null pointer, we're going to throw the canonical uh, exception for a failure to allocate mem memory, which is bad alloc. Otherwise, we're going to return that uh, void pointer casted to our type T. There you go. Very good. We're also handling errors. This is very nice and clean. And on the other side of things, 
when we when it's time to free, we call local free. If lo local free succeeds, it should return a null pointer. If it doesn't return a null pointer, again, we're going to throw an exception. And that's it. There's nothing else to it. You don't have to change anything about the actual uh, call to allocate shared. That doesn't uh, doesn't change, obviously. It's nicely... Well, the actual implementation of the allocation is nicely encapsulated here, and it's decoupled from the creation of the shared pointer now via the allocator. And if we run this, again, we should see no problems. Still creates and destroys our object. No issues. It works. We, we don't see anything different. Only now, in this case, it's all, all the, uh, the memory for the control block and the actual noisy object itself. It's all existing in the same single memory allocation in the heap that local alloc uses. Again, we can simplify further by, you know, making that default and getting rid of these, although I think it's probably a good idea to have them in there if we want to use the allocator in different places where it might be necessary, but yeah. Uh, so you see, allocator is actually... It's not that hard to implement an allocator. It's uh, not that many lines of code. And you... This isn't the only use case for, you know, implementing your own allocator, like if you need to use other memory allocation things besides malloc or new. Uh, that's uh, that's obviously one main use case, but there are other use cases where you would like to perhaps upfront allocate a huge block of memory and then you want to manage it yourself. And doing that can have, you know, many performance um, advantages depending on your use scenario. Like you create one heap per thread and then you don't have to do synchronization for all of your uh, dynamic allocations. That's just one thing you could do. But anyways, that's not, that's not the point of this video. The point of this video was just to do some fun stuff having to do with shared pointer and we did it and it was good. As always, hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you soon with some more advanced C++.